H2K Emphasis provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Emphasis – How we are different from our competitors. 100% job oriented training, hands on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one time fee and lifetime access to classes, access to recorded sessions of live classes. H2K Emphasis has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For a free demo class, visit us at h2kemphasis.com. So normally any applications, whatever we do, whatever we design, so uh, we'll normally have UI layer, which is user interface layer, where where you'll have uh, HTML code, where you'll have buttons, drop down list, all those things, that is called UI layer. And we'll have business logic layer, where you do some calculations, some business logic. And data access layer is the intermediate layer between uh, between the code and the database. So how to connect to the database, the, all those things will be there in data access layer. And database will have the list of tables, list of stored preserves, list of uh, uh, database related objects we will see in the database. Now, every application, every application or any enterprise application for sure will have database. So if you want to save the details in database or if you want to, uh, uh, I think we discussed uh, all of you remember we discussed on a topic called SQL injection. How many of you remember it? Please ping me in the chat window. Windows or Notepad. SQL injection. Who remember this? Did we discuss this? I'm sure we didn't discuss SQL injection. Okay. Okay, so anyone knows it? What is SQL injection? Anyone who knows in the class? Let's see if anyone knows it. So I got um, anyone in the class knows about SQL injection? No Google, please. Uh, just you can tell if you know this or not. Okay, okay, no problem. Now, uh, okay, so that's okay. Uh, now, all the uh, okay. Let's come back here to this topic. Normally, any any application will have these four layers: so UI layer, business logic layer, data access layer, and database. So if you want to save the details, for example, I want to save the details. I have a form, I have a web form uh, where I have first name, last name, uh, age and designation. And I have a save button there. At the, at the bottom I have a save button. When the user clicks on save, I want to save the details of these four fields into database. So in that case, what I can do is I can write from the UI layer, I can have uh, I can have four text boxes, uh, and then I can have a button save button. And in the business logic layer, if I want to do some validations or if I want to do some um, uh, checking whether the designation is there or not in the database or those things, I can do it using business logic layer. Now, if I want to save the details into the database, I need to write uh, something called stored processor, which will take four parameters and uh, it'll save the details in the database. In the data access layer, we call that stored processor. Whatever we wrote in the database, it will call that stored processor and pass the four parameters into that stored processor. So now we are going to see how to create stored procedures. So these are the four layer architecture, you know, four layers that normally will be there in any, any enterprise application. So the first UI layer, if you see in the UI layer, you have HTML code, JavaScript code, and ASP.NET web controls. In the business logic layer, you normally have C sharp code if you are doing on .NET project, Java code if you are doing on J2E or, uh, or Java projects. And data access layer will have uh, the interaction between uh, how to interact uh, with the code and the database. And database layer or, or the database, database will have tables, store preserve, functions, views, joins, etc. Okay, these are the Normal. So now we are going to see how to create the stored preserve which is required for inserting data into uh, database. Okay, so now let me go here and 
I'll tell some sim uh, I have already sent one PDF document for you which has uh, how to create store pressure so let me open that and I'm going to open this material who is not having this material uh, this material which I have uh, like TSQL querying anyone in the class is not having this please ping me in the chat window okay so that means uh, only one student is not having I will send it everyone else is having okay good okay so I'll send this uh, to you uh, Vijay after the class okay yeah so now let's go uh, let's search for stored preserves So today also actually there is a uh, uh, same power outage here every day the same time so in case of the class um, okay so now let's uh, let me create some simple store pressure here so I'm going to uh, let me select some please uh, read this document for sure this is very useful document so it has a lot of concepts uh, which is required for developer so now let me go back here and now let me click on a new query and the database which we are using is we are using dotnet batch 2 so right click on this new query and uh, and let's see whether okay I'll send to you is I I'll send to you as well so now if I see here select star from employee execute this and now I'm seeing this uh, employee first name uh, and last name so now questions to all of you so how can I see the uh, data types of these columns please ping me in the chat window how can I see the data types of these columns of these three columns yeah I got answer from Shamila how about others the question is I want to see what I got the answer from Srikanth and Isai as well I repeat the question I want to see what are the data types of the columns so it's not like sys.columns sys.columns is used for searching a column the answer here is uh, sp underscore help so if you give here sp underscore help and if you type here employee and uh, and when you click on execute this you can see that the columns whatever you have here okay so and do you think there is is there any primary key for this table by seeing this results are you seeing do you think you have any primary key for this table so we don't have any primary key here so so if you see let me create another table and show you if you have primary key how it looks like so now I'm going to put ID integer okay so now if I execute this so I'm going to create table uh, my temp table so I just executed it now if you see here SP underscore help and if I type here my temp table so if I execute this you can see that how it is showing here you can see here there is something called there is something called primary primary key and what is the primary key the primary key is uh, where is it ID okay so the primary key is normally uh, ID so so that's how you can actually identify here you have constraint keys primary key and you have some uh, if you don't give name for it it itself will give some some dummy name so it's given name like this and uh, and then you can see that here there is constraint keys called ID so ID is the primary key for our table but now when you run it for our table employee table sp underscore help employee table you don't see that option here so that means your employee table is not having a primary key okay so now let me refresh it I'll show you the other way to see how whether your table is having primary key or not let me refresh it and expand tables and if you expand employee you will not see any lock symbol here for these columns all the three columns you don't see any key symbol there 
but when you go here for my temp table and when you expand columns so you are seeing a symbol called uh, a key symbol here that means this ID is a primary key it's showing here PK that means primary key okay there are two ways using UI management studio you can see whether a table is having primary key or using the code sp underscore help you can see whether the table is having primary key or not okay so now let's try to create a store pressure so I'm going to uh, I have a table employee select start from employee and now I'm going to write a uh, store pressure to insert the records into database so let me put new query and control V and uh, I'm going to pass here add USP underscore this is a normal syntax USP stands for user stored pressure uh, USP underscore insert employee data so this is the stored pressure name which is used to insert employee data for employee table so what are the parameters I need for inserting data into employee table what are the parameters I need for inserting data into employee table so if you see here this is the employee table select star from employee so I need to pass these three fields from the UI okay so so if you are if for those who are not clear let me open MS paint first you will have a UI you will have a UI where employee ID employee name and uh, and what is the last one um, employee name and first name and last name so you'll have a UI here uh, user interface and then let me let me pull it down a little bit okay so and then you will have something called okay okay so now let me take this so and then you have something called a save button so this is called employee ID and this is called first name and and this is called last name and you have something called save button so from the UI when you click on save it will actually call the business logic layer if you have some validations or if you want to do something you will do it in business logic layer for uh, actually we will discuss this when we are learning dotnet uh, ASP.NET and from the business logic layer you have uh, you have something called uh, uh, data access layer and from the data access layer you will call something uh, you will call database so imagine this is the this is the symbol for database normally we use so in the database what you will do is these three parameters you will pass it to a business logic layer and these three parameters again you will pass it to database in how do you after you pass it to database you have to call stored processor you will call the stored processor and you will pass these three parameters and inside the stored processor you will have logic to add the details into you will have logic to insert the details into database so that is what we are learning now stored processor and once we start with ASP.NET we will see how to write this layer how to write this layer as well okay so now let's go back to stored pressure here and I'm going I'll try to create the stored pressure so so I need the first parameter what is the first parameter I need I need employee ID and now employee ID is integer at the rate uh, first name remember you have to give the same data type which you have for your table so so see that table employee ID I have as integer and first name where at 25 last name where at 20 so first name where at 25 and at the rate last name in SQL server we give the parameters with at the rate symbol before them we give the uh, variables with at the rate symbol before them okay so I have given three uh, don't no need to give comma for the last one so I have three uh, parameters here and I have given the name of the store pressure as USP underscore insert employee data and now what I'm doing here I'm going to insert the records I'm, I need to insert these three values into the database so you need to write here so insert into employee values at the rate employee ID at the rate first name at the rate last name that's it we are done with the stored pressure so 
it will take the parameters and it will insert the records into the table employee. That is the purpose of this table, this stored pressure USB insert employee data. So let me execute this. Okay, and then let's see how to test this stored pressure. So, so there are two ways to test this stored pressure. So one is, one is you need to write. So let me copy this name of the stored pressure. And let me go to here new query and uh, I'm going to have here exec space and I need to give the parameters. So what are the parameters I have? So I have three. I have employee in, uh, first name as uh, say for example Rajiv and uh, Kumar or something last name. So let me execute this. So this is how you have to test your stored browser. So once you are done with stored browser in order to test whether the records are getting added into the data or not you have to write exec execute exec space uh, space your stored present name and then space your parameters which you want with comma separated and since this is number I'm not giving single quotes but this uh, for var care thing you have to give single quotes so now let's check whether the record is inserted or not so let's do here select star from employee so previously we had two records so let's verify how many records we have now so sorry previously we had four records and now I have uh, Rajiv Kumar is there so which is fifth record so now if I try to uh, you might get a question like I have three employee employee three employee three so anyway because I inserted by mistake here so if I put seven here and if I put here uh, ABCD or, or if I put uh, DEF or whatever so if I execute this you can see that select star from employee you can see that the record has been inserted that clearly tells that your stored preserve is working fine so this is the syntax for creating a stored preserve so you need to write create procedure procedure name create procedure procedure name and you need to give the parameters as begin and you need to write uh, if you want to insert into it insert a record into employee table sometimes uh, say for example let me give another scenario okay so let me open MS Paint so now uh, you have some other scenario where you have a screen like this sorry so you have a screen like this where you have uh, you have something called EMP ID and you have a text box here and and then you have uh, you have a s you have something called search button so based on employee ID when you click on search you have to display the results here the employee details first name last name if the employee ID is there you have to display like this if the employee ID is not there uh, if the employee ID is not there we have to uh, display not found employee not found or something like that so here how many parameters we need to pass for the store preserve please ping me in the chat window in this screen how many parameters we need to pass for a store preserve we have only one parameter that one parameter is employee ID and based on employee ID we need to get the details of we need to get the details of employee so so let's create the short pressure here and one more thing we should not give flower brackets here we have to give begin and end flower brackets are only in C sharp code in SQL server everything is like begin and end okay so let's try to create the short pressure for get employee ID get uh, employee by, by ID so let me create new query and paste the existing one uh, I'm going to modify this because it's not insert uh, see give your store present name accordingly don't give uh, the names as you like so give the name uh, based on the functionality or based on uh, the purpose of store present so here you can give get employee ID get employee uh, details by ID so this clearly tells like okay you are getting employee details by ID by employee ID and how many parameters you have you have only one parameter so now now since only one parameter no need to come up as begin and here you have to write select query because you are trying to retrieve the details from the database so now instead of this insert you need to write select star from employee where employee ID is equal to the parameter which you are passing employee ID 
so let me execute this so we are done with the simple store pressure for get employee details by ID so let me create the store pressure and now let's test it so how to test it yeah who wants to go ahead uh, everyone playing me in the chat window I want to test I want to test this store pressure whether this is working fine or not so so how to test it here this is the store pressure which I want to test so how can I test it I exec okay exec followed by followed by the store present name and then followed by any value so let's test for 7 uh, I'm giving 7 here uh, let's see whether it will get the details of employee ID 7 so let me execute this so let me execute this and you can see that this is giving me employee ID details 7 so that means th that means this is working fine so let me let me test